the right everything gets good on your side concerning the yes. screen sharing yes good. let's go thank you cindy i'm really happy to share with you some thoughts about the, the robotics and the algorithmization and automation of farming practices uh welcome everybody nice to see you and I use some reference in science fiction to guide my reflection. So, uh, I am David Rizzo. I am from Unilassar in France, uh, northern France, and I'm a member of the Chair in Agricultural Machinery and New Technologies and the research unit called Interact. Feel free to grab the, the slides and share it on the social media by using the the good tag that I'll show you. Uh, a presentation in four parts, the inspiring thoughts, some concepts of definition, some examples, and then the perspective that will open on the question and answer uh, we'll have at the end. Roughly uh, 40 minutes or probably less than that, and then we will, mm, we will discuss about what I showed you. Uh, who am I? I am one of many. If you look on the internet about David Rizzo, you will find some tens of people with the same name working in research. So not sure being you, who are you talking about? You know, who are you talking with? Uh, the, the, the algorithm in face of you, in front of you today, is a landscape agronomist and data scientist. So I'm working at the landscape level beyond the farm. So it's quite in phase of it, with the uh, beyond seminars. My focus is on decision making systems and support at the institutional levels. I mean, the sociological and organizational levels. So, uh, trying to understand how robotics and digitalization has an impact and influence uh, on how people together are making decisions. So, the inspiring thoughts. Uh, as Cindy was saying uh, the, during the introduction, uh, are the uh, possibility of agricultural automation today already part of yesterday science fiction? Uh, but Jimmy in old books, uh, stories written before space travel, but about space travel. How could there have been stories about space travel before? Yeah, it's a matter of science fiction. And I used uh, the uh, Philip Dick book uh, titled Do Androids Dream? of electric ship this is a science fiction novel by uh, this author dating back of something like mm, you see uh, 60 60 years ago uh in a world devastated by the cataclysm we are talking about um, uh, climate change nowadays we are living in a pandemic so this kind of needs of need to look beyond what we are living it's urgent again uh in that kind of world the mere possession of a living animal became a sign of wealth and empathy uh androids that were the robots working with humans uh were living without being alive so they were the most advanced form of robotics but questioning the fundamentals of being human so this is my main reference for today's talk. Uh, ever since I got here from Mars, uh, my life has consisted of imitating the human, doing what she would do, acting as if I had the thoughts and impulse of a human would have, imitating as far as I'm concerned a superior life form. This is one of the androids made by Agent Decker. Probably you saw, you saw also the movie issued from this film called Blade Runner. And she is Wilma. Wilma is the artificial intelligence bunch of algorithms uh, that power the small robot company. Uh, Wilma turns field data into per plant intelligence, enabling decisions which take into account agronomy soil science and market conditions. So Wilma is she, and she is an algorithm governing three actuators in the um, approach by the small robot company. Harry, delegated for seeding, 
Dick for a plant per plant management, and Tom for data scouting. They are still developing their prototypes, but the system is already there. Uh, what I found interesting is that the small robot company clearly identified Wilma, so the artificial intelligence, as an um, uh, individual part of the system, so uh, needing a name. What about dreaming? Mm, this farmer want to, wants more time to dream. Uh, it's an interview uh, of a couple of uh, three years ago uh, concerning a program by China to launch uh, a replacement uh, of farmers by robots, somewhat. Uh, Beijing, June uh, 2018, uh, Ning uh, only sleeps five hours. Uh, a day during uh, the harvest season. Uh, he has a combined to, um, to harvest uh, corn and, uh, and grains. Uh, he watched the video a few days before the interview featuring a self-driving harvester. His answer to the interview was people only need to press some buttons and all the work will be done. It is very much like a science fiction movie, he said. I plan to buy one next year and then can I have a good sleep. So uh, I'm just joking about this subconscious dimension we have concerning robots. Robots are already there, but we are not ready to work with them. But we need some concepts and definitions. What is a robot? Uh, I used one of the multiple um, definitions you can have. This one is by a French called uh, Coiffe uh, back in 2007 uh, concerning the industrial robots concept, definition, and classification. Uh, the scientific concept of a robot implies a machine capable to execute a physical task and at least being versatile, capable to execute different tasks, and or auto-adaptive to the working environment. So you have to mix a machine capable to execute in something, and either or both, versatility and the uh, auto-adaptability uh, to the environment. This is um, a notion that we will work upon later on. What about automation? Uh, the reference is given by the uh, automatic vehicles, uh, you know about Tesla and the other machines. You have five steps uh, from the, the, on the left blue side, you have still the presence of a driver. On the right hand side, the green blocks are about uh, the reduced uh, the allow to reduce the uh, intervention by a driver. Uh, in agricultural robotics, we are around the level three. We still have the need for the monitoring by a, um, a person around the machine. There are limitations because uh, the system recognizes the limits of its performance. However, it is not able to bring the system to a state of minimum risk on its own uh, for all situations. That means that robot could already be in the field, but we have no uh, legislative, uh, no rules to determine what is the security envelope around the robot to stop it and how to test and check and, and certify that the systems on board are capable to uh, allow to, uh, the robots to recognize the risk and bring the system to a state of minimum risk. Uh, this is the main limitation, but uh, as people coming from the automobile sector say, uh, the agricultural robotics will be ready um, before then the automatic vehicles. Why? Because if you are in a field, you can stop whenever you want. So you can bring the robot and the machine to a state of minimum risk. Whereas if you are on a vehicle, on a, a car, you cannot stop. You, the machine has to evaluate if there is more risk to continue on or to stop. 
because you are uh, without a machine working, especially in the mixed situation where you have human driving car and autonomous vehicle. This is not the case when you are in the field. So the robot can stop and the security measure will be uh, deployed uh, in an easier way compared to the automobile. So stay uh, alerted because uh, agricultural robotics will perform uh, easier probably than the um, uh, vehicle. Uh, by the way, I mentioned here a friend of us, uh, Michel Berluca. Mm, he is a very uh, good observer of a tech member of an association I will mention at the end, and a very good mm, person to, to know about the development of agricultural robotics. Agricultural robotics can mm, be resumed on three missions. Uh, the machine fulfilling the scientific robot definition can be classified in three main types. Decision robots that you need for supporting human decision. These are all the data scouter, scouting robots. Robots like drones, rover, carrying sensor, and capable to interact with the environment without realizing any specific task except the data collection. These are very interesting to open eyes, nose, and ears in the field to augment the reality perceived and recorded by the farmers. In the middle, you have assistant robots. In this case, uh, Effibot by Effidence, or you have many like that, collaborating with humans to realize a physical task. This is the uh, environment of the cobotics. The cobotics has the advantage to simplify the physical task, leaving the intelligent part to the human when uh, the task is too complex to, to be realized. But by the cobotics and the assistant robots, uh, you can introduce the notion of robot in the farm. So easing simplifying the, the adoption of these, these new kind of machines. Then the robots we are used to talk about are the substitution robots that are capable to replace completely humans to realize a physical task. So to recap, you have data collection, cobotics, and food robotics. And by the way, uh, I can mention also NIO technologies that is one of the first uh, industry and manufacturers, at least in Europe, that uh, arrived on the market uh, with some kind of more than 100 robots now. But there is an unconscious idea of robots. Uh, Rob, what is a robot? What is the etymology of this word? It's a concept originated in the science fiction literature upon a real artificial human characterized mainly by a human-like intelligence, including will and consciousness. Uh, the problem is that in theater and um, literature, the robots sometimes uh, fight against the human to, uh, to conquer, to, um, to gain freedom. And this in gen uh, generated a kind of fear against robots and being replaced. Uh, even these are just simple machines executing data collection or helping humans with a physical task. When we are talking about robots, when we are talking about legislation, public opinion is important. And these are the, the roots and the fundamentals of um, general unconscious perception. So we have to be aware and to make uh, visible and to elicit this kind of an unconscious sphere uh, before being able to move really towards robotics. As Cindy was saying uh, and during the presentation, robots are already capable to milk cows, to manage stable, um, to grow crops, and in the near future also to harvest them already capable to have tomatoes and small fruits and etc. The problems are on the acceptability and the way we want to manage the security around these kind of autonomous machines. 
Evidently, that's why they occasionally kill the employers in three here from Mars to Earth. Uh, again, in the um, Philip Dick uh, novel, Do Androids Dream of Electric Ship? A better life without servitude. You see, this is uh, the, uh, the idea. Um, Capic, Capic uh, defined uh, ro the, mo uh, the word robot for the first time, complementary to automa uh, automation and all the derivatives. Um, so we were a, um, a century ago, 40 years, 50 years afterwards, we were still thinking that robot could kill um, humans. And again, a couple of months ago, Elon Musk presented the new Android he's working on. He specified uh, he's relatively uh, light and he cannot run fast. So you can stop it and destroy it if uh, it comes to uh, address you. So we have still have this kind of unconscious fear of being attacked by a robot. But the robots we are talking about in the field are totally different. But the word is still robot. Uh, at the beginning of the 19th century, uh, just projecting to the year 2000, the farmer was imagined imagine to um, being capable to manage the, the machine, wired machine, just being comfortably um, seated uh, in the farm. A, a, hundred, uh, a century after, there was no so much imagination put in to, to project in, into the future. This image uh, still see the farmer, a man again, uh, with a cap. We don't know why, but closed in a in an office in a bureau, uh, and all around machines are producing data and communicating. This is already the case. Hopefully, and fortunately, uh, farmers are expected to be in the field and not in the bureau, just controlling uh, through a screen. And I will come back on this point of the human machine interface. Nonetheless, uh, just consider that uh, agricultural robotics is a mix of, uh, between farming data to describe uh, the reality and the physical variables, um, connected animals that uh, uh, with sensor attached to the livestock can bring information about health and behavior. You have drones and uh, rovers to, uh, for data scouting. You have fleet of robots. Uh, we can finally think of a new way of managing tasks. Instead of one big machine being bigger and bigger, we can come back to a uh, per task management. And then you have uh, smart tractors, anyway, all the kind of machines that already now, uh, since uh, some 10 years or 12 years, already have embedded sensors that are communicating with, um, with the farm and the managers. Data collection is so crucial. Uh, data collection is has been intensified through the wealth of embedded sensor and every type of recent equipment. Best a basic tractor already has a, something like uh, 100 sensor, not being robotized. I mean, the basic one already has a lot of sensor, as a lot of machines and devices we use in daily life. There, is, there has been a dramatic increase in resolution of airborne sensors. I mean, all, for instance, for Europe, uh, all the Sentinel data, uh, Sentinel-2 data, uh, that has a um, very high and metric, sometimes submetric resolution. So completing what we can already have on uh, mobile machines. And then you have a steady development of the Internet of Things, this concept is uh, complementary to the notion of robotics. Robotics is just one piece of the bigger puzzle. So what about data use? 
This data are used to train machine learning algorithms, eventually being capable to characterize and reproduce practices that were once in the only realm of physical practical experience of farmers. I mean, farmers before just did what they did and nobody uh, knew it. And it was difficult to grasp and size what they were doing. So we developed a lot of labeling and declaration and this kind of technical specification for organic farming, raisinet farming, and so forth. Thanks to data, we can describe these practices in, in, the, in perspective. We can easily think to replace this kind of intelligence by farmers, or probably not. On the left side, you see uh, Sentide, uh, a rover, uh, by Meropi. Meropi is Meropi is a startup, a French startup, working on image collection. Uh, nothing special compared to a drone, except that it is a kind of land drone with a camera uh, pointing uh, to the to the crop and back camera pointing uh, underneath. The, the leaf so you can have a complete image of the architecture of the plant a uh, very proximity sensor it's not enough uh, remember that animal breeding has something like 20 25 years of experience we had the first um, milking robot was presented the, at the CIMA, the French International Exhibition on Agricultural Machinery, um, back in 1996 or 98, uh, something like that. So they have, in, in livestock breeding, a lot of experience. Nowadays, they are deploying the Internet of Things. So you have connected echoes that allows for better data mining and uh, the development of uh, data mining to explore uh, in a context-based uh, um, fashion all this data, coupled with the development of handless devices, some, uh, like the glasses, the connected glasses, you can have a really different approach to, to agriculture. It's already the case in livestock grading. This is NetApp, and they are already working on the, uh, the handless device for farmer to follow up the state of each uh, animal in the breed. Uh, Arvalis and other worked on this kind of devices for crop also to recognize automatic, automatically um, pests and diseases on crop. And you have the same already in machinery sector uh, to facilitate uh, the maintenance of machines. So it's a technology already there and um, mature enough to be used by farmers. What are we talking about in this sense? Coming back to the physical part. Uh, this is a scheme uh, we elaborated with farmers uh, that worked to, uh, to create Internet of Things. We started from what they observe in the field to make decision. So the physical variable when you say physical variable, you, you can identify a signal that can be converted by a sensor. This is the key of everything, even of robotics. You need to convert physical reality into digital reality. Then you have all the bunch of the gray box moving from sensor to uh, processing, uh, all the kind of small computer and uh, processor you can have, such as Arduino for starting, um, or Raspberry uh, for exploring. Then you have the notion of network and server. There is a, an interesting debate and a kind of commercial war about this kind of database, because uh, just consider then, in case of robots, the half of the robot is not visible, is there, is the cloud, is data collected and processes for managing the, um, uh, the robot. Then you have the interface, uh, the human machine interface, the machine learning, learning and all the algorithms that can be developed uh, furthermore by 
other companies not working in robotics, and then you have the decision. So beforehand, the decision was the farmer go to the field, observe physical variable with his or her intelligence, elaborate the information and make decision. Nowadays, thanks to the sensor, we can convert physical reality into digital. So moving to the parallel world, the twin world, we can work in uh, to develop in a new way in the decision-making process. Even more, we are moving and switching towards the edge computing. All these kind of sensors are embedding uh, real-time processing thanks to the miniaturization of processors. Uh, so simple tasks can thus be handled directly by in between connected objects. Beforehand, it is the gray part in the slide, you needed to have data sent to the, to the cloud. In the cloud, you had algorithms to elaborate it and then send it back to the human machine interface. Nowadays, and more and more, you have the miniaturization of processing capabilities, so the possibility for sensor to use this kind of context-wise information. This is creating not only the internet of things, but a new cyber physical frontier that bring uh, to a new level uh, the idea of computing. We are used nowadays, it seems relatively few years to a computer or some simple device we can interact with, such as a robot. Indeed, there is an internet of things that link in a network uh, all these uh, kind of objects, transforming physical reality into digital. But data are a tsunami. We are collecting data since a lot of time. And I come back to the novel. This building, except for my apartment, is completely kipolizite. Kipolizite? She didn't not comprehend. Kipo is useless object. We can say data, like junk mail or match folders after you use the last match or gun wrappers or etc. When nobody's around, Kipo reproduce itself is the same for data. Uh, I love this notion of Kipo elaborated by Philip Dick. It's the kind of messy going up and reproducing itself. Data is the same without structure. Data are just noise and distraction. So uh, we have transformation of physical reality into data. We have a lot of data reproducing it in themselves in a tsunami. These are expected somewhat to ease decision-making about farming operation. It is also easy to prospect to use this kind of data uh, to directly pilot autonomous equipment, either a meant or still have, a, uh, still have in a cabin, like a tractor that is already uh, set driving. Will this data-driven automata be able to make mistakes to learn? This, uh, I think, is the main question we can ask our, uh, ourselves about uh, algorithm as human do. To rephrase the Philip Dick novel, will automated data drive in agriculture still dream of farmers or as farmers in a future where farmers might become rare? I think you're right. It would seem we lack a specific talent you human possess. I believe it's called empathy. So I'm coming back to this notion of trust, to this notion of relation between human and robots. And it's a question already asked by the former European Commissioner for Competition, uh, Margrethe Vestager. More and more, we have been asked to put our trust not just in other people, but in computers and algorithms. Algorithms most of us don't fully understand. Biggest challenge to the future of innovation, it's whether the new technology can succeed in winning the public trust. So my message about this is robot and technologies and data are already there since multiple years. What we need to work on is trust as agronomists and as
as public opinion. Some examples, not the way, not the less. Uh, if you are looking about uh, what is already available, we know that robots can already mine 24 hours a day in mining, not data mining, but real mining, robots already replaced humans for this kind of harsh uh, task. Uh, the grain producer in Australia uh, started talk with the Western Australian government to seek formal endorsement and adoption of a new code of practice that will help drive the future use of autonomous farm vehicles inspired by the autonomous mining. Um, in, in some cases, knowing how to operate an iPhone could be enough to manage a robotic dairy farm. In this slideshow, I will share you, uh, with, uh, you will have all the links. Uh, robotics in livestock management is already so developed that you, you just need almost to run an iPhone to run the farm. Uh, even more, farmers are using social media, so this digital interface, to find new way of inventing their work and their job. Uh, to sell products, for instance, so to gain money and to uh, have a different approach to investment. In particular in China, uh, bike dance and TikTok was very good and exploited to create momentum about uh, the agricultural and local production creating and playing on trust. Uh, concerning robotics, from an agronomic uh, agronom point of view, you can see the crops, especially vegetables, because livestock is already uh, done, uh, raw crops and cereal-like crops. The main difference is that in raw crops, you have a steering guide, a steering guide uh, given by the rows of the crops, so it's easier to steer the robots and have automation. A lot of robots are already there for row crops. We still need de development for cereal-like crops, like rapeseed, wheat, barley, and so forth. On the robot side, you have two main families, uh, the um, platform and the tractor-like. The tractor-like is what, what we already know. Uh, these are uh, implement carrier, when you can uh, each any kind of implement you have at the farm. Uh, the main innovation is the weight distribution, and so to reduce the soil compaction. On the other side, on the platform, uh, in this case I took uh, FD20 uh, by Fandroid, you have the development of dedicated tools. That means your um, robotics are helping to reconsidering the relation with soil compaction and soil tillage and interaction. Going further, uh, this is an issue by a poster I presented in uh, the conference uh, where Matteo, uh, Matthew Cutule was also presenting his robot from the Clemson University. Uh, as farmer, we think to operation, farming operation, tillage, planting, weeding, fertilizing, harvesting, data scouting and generally multiple tasks. Uh, it could be interesting uh, to categorize robots on their capa capacity to uh, deal with one or more tasks. Uh, we can come back on this if you have a uh, further question. I just put some example of robots. To learn more, you have this book. Mm, recently published by Quai, a uh, French editor, from the uh, Forum of in, uh, International Forum on Agricultural Robotics 2020. Uh, you are expected to participate if the topic in, is of your interest to the new edition, the sixth edition of the uh, FIRA. You see the title When Farmers Take Over Robots. Uh, it's an uh, interesting uh, book about uh, agricultural robotics, and you have 27 uh, sh information sheets about robots. It's not enough because, meanwhile, uh, the same number is already on the market. And then you have for France, but I would say, as an international reference, uh, the Robotry Association that is dedicated to the uh, to the sector for instance to classify robots and to have a better overview about um, what are the robots for 
Uh, just keep in mind that a uh, key to classify robot can be the weight. Robot can be small, medium, or big. Big is needed to handle uh, tillage, but it poses it trace more question about security. On the other side, small robot can be run in fleet, but they are uh, required to think to um, tillage in a different way because they cannot track usual implement. So the, the debate is nowadays about how much a robot should wait to accomplish a farming task, but to be sure. Shortly, uh, he found himself standing by his overcar rather dazed as employees of the animal dealer loaded the crate of a goat into the car. I own an animal now, he said to himself, a living animal, not electric. This is the post scientific uh, science fiction vision when we will have just robots we can uh, feel feeling um, strange to have a living animal nonetheless sit robocat uh, robocat keeps ignoring my comments and say the chicken of course they do i may be a robot but i'm still a cat so for robot there is this notion of identity and consciousness it's not a question already for agricultural robotics, but it can become uh, an issue in the future. Uh, I can skip this. Uh, just to give you another example, you have the hands free actor run by the Harper Adams University in the UK. It's just one actor, but completely managed by robots. Or you have another example, very interesting, the Challenge Santéol, run in 2018 by Kuhn Agriculture in France. And they managed 50 hectares of, uh, of maize. Uh, the key was to reduce the soil compaction. They managed five operations, uh, seeding, uh, tillage, seeding, protection, fertilization, and weeding. Discovering a new way of moduling, uh, modularity and flexibility of farming operation. Coming to an end, so uh, just a couple of slides, and then we can switch to the question and answer. Put all this in perspective. Changes are faster than we can could perceive. On your left hand side, you have the photo of the last horse drawn carriage in 1917. On the right hand side you have one of the first prototype in 2014, so less than 100 years uh, and less in a few years the technologies can make um, huge uh, improvement and be mature for the market if the market is ready to accept it. Uh, just think to what can this can change in terms of farming management? Taking the example of vehicles, uh, with the old technologies like the one we have today for tractors and harvesters and combines and so forth, you have security issues, energy inefficiency, costs. The future of robotics is about higher security, energy efficiency, modularity, and a lot of new problems. Uh, technologies are available. Uh, we are moving from just simple tasks to the automation of the whole operation. Seeding is not just putting the seed into the soil, but is preparing the, the soil, distributing fertilizers, monitoring the crop, etc. So we are switching from simple task, a full operation, but the robots in open field are working with living things and extrapolating the experience from one model to another is still difficult. In addition, there is a lack of legal framework and we need to understand what, where to put the change of scale from gigantism of current tractors and machines to fleet of machines if we are ready to switch towards a uh, greater modularity. Robots are expected to uh, being a half 
of the equipment market, uh, especially if I refer to the tactic report estimation relaunched by the uh, AXEMA uh, report in 2018. AXEMA is the um, uh, trade union of agricultural machinery constructor in France. And you see on the right, uh, right hand side, um, all the kind of robots you can have and that are expected to be on the market very soon. Self-driving tractors, agricultural drones, equipment management, uh, fertilization, tillage, animal management, and their man management, and much more. He thought, too, about his need for a real animal. Within him, an actual hatred once more manifested itself toward his electric ship, which he had to tend, had to care about as if it lived, the tyranny of an object. We are stopped by this tyranny of objects when switching from the current way of doing towards the available technologies. I, it doesn't know I exist as a human or as a farmer, if you want. Like the androids, it had, it had no ability to appreciate the existence of another the notion of empathy. And I would like to end with the um, answer uh, to this farmer in Australia. Uh, do you think today's farmer need a robot? He answered, I think today's robots need a farmer to teach them how uh, to manage uh, complexity and how to innovate and learn. Just for thought. Uh, the soil is um, becoming a, again central uh, in this system. On the one hand, you have soil central device like Roboti, for instance, is a Danish robot uh, reducing soil compaction. In perspective, you have soil less farming, for instance, to cultivate Mars or the Moon. So find, finding bio-regenerative uh, life support system. So the soil already in current farming or in the future is again central uh, for this notion, for uh, automation. A couple of images to, to end. Uh, these are the last slides. Mm, future farmer can just control the operation by the uh, smartwatch, not in, in, in a bureau, but running, uh, exploiting the free life uh, in the field and letting the complex tasks and um, heavy tasks, harsh tasks, uh, being accomplished by a system of objects connected in between them. This is the Kubota vision. Or to go even farther in time, this is the video Cindy was mentioning at the beginning when presenting me. Uh, this is a real science fiction from today. Uh, this is from Russia, and they are playing around what could be the robotics and the android in the Mars system. So that's all for me. Thank you for your attention. And we can stop the recording and open in the question.